Today's video is going to be a slight departure from my usual content. So one of my first jobs in this industry was to design power transformers. And throughout the years, a question that I seem to get asked a lot is um, by people that may have a power transformer that they've taken out of an old piece of equipment, or they've found it, or they've purchased it online somewhere, and they have no idea the power output or the power potential of the transformer. With some experience, you can kind of get a bit of a gauge for that depending on the size of the transformer, but it's not always that easy to tell. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to determine how much power the transformer should be able to deliver. So let's get on with this. One. So before we get into this too deeply, I just want to go over a few basic assumptions that um, I'm talking about here. So the first assumption is that this is a power transformer designed to operate mainly at 50 or 60 hertz frequency. And the second assumption is that most power transformers that come out of manufacturer's equipment are designed to be the lowest cost possible and therefore I am assuming that they are going to use the lower cost laminations. There are different types of laminations available and they can affect the transformer efficiency by up to 10%. So this video is going to assume that you have the lower cost laminations which will give a worst case scenario. It may be that if the transformer has higher value or higher quality laminations that the efficiency of the transformer may be a little bit higher and therefore the output rating of the transformer may also be a little bit higher. We won't be calculating the input voltage for the transformer in this video. It will purely be a calculation on the output power of the transformer. So from the textbook examples of um, core calculations we can see here that to design the transformer um, or calculate the core size traditionally you'd need to know the value for the turns per volt or the volts per turn for the transformer and how many turns you actually needed and there are several formulas uh, several steps you can go through to calculate the turns per volt and then once you have that value you can then put those into the formula which is here and then that will enable you to calculate the core size of your transformer but fortunately there is a very simple way around all of that to very much simplify that process and estimate to a quite a high level of accuracy the rating of any particular transformer from the core size. The transformers themselves are wound on a former which is called a bobbin. They're often either single sections or dual sections where you'd have a primary side say here for example the secondary side here or some do not have this central barrier and the, the windings will be laid on top of each other. Normally the primary would go down first and then there will be a, a screen of some description and then the secondary would go on top. The actual core of the transformer is the iron that sits in the central hole inside of the bobbin which is shown here and here. And in most low cost power transformers, the core itself is formed by what's known as laminations. Now these, traditionally these come in two sections. You have what's called an E and an I. The core part of the lamination is the central piece of the E here. And this would go through the center of the bobbin 
and then the windings would sit on the bobbing and in this section and in this section the eye section would go over the top in here to create a continuous magnetic path so here's a representation of the actual uh, laminations as they would be stacked up inside the transformer the dimension that we're interested in part that we're interested in is the core area so this is the cross-sectional area of the core that goes through the central part of the transformer and it's purely this area which is used to determine the power rating of the transformer if we have a brief look at this transformer we can see the individual laminations are made up of single thin sheets of metal and they go through the transformer so this is one side of the E this is the other side of the E and the central part goes through the center of the transformer and the eyes The eye section is here. Now this particular transformer is made by hand so it's not welded and the laminations that, um, are actually put in by putting the E's in opposite directions. So there'll be one E is inserted from this side and then on top of it will go from this side and then this side and they're stacked up on top of each other. That will then leave gaps in between the laminations on the top surface or on both sides and the eyes are pushed into the gaps then the whole thing is clamped together and normally it will be impregnated in varnish in a vacuum impregnation system called autoclaving but this particular transformer is one of mine from 30 years ago has never been varnished and therefore you can see it started to rust. In the first example we'll take a transformer of a known quantity um, so this is an old one from Morris Components and we can see that it's rated at 20 VA. Now the VA rating of a transformer is slightly different from the power delivery. So when, when we're designing transformers we design them to have a potential performance. It's a bit like a voltage is a potential. So it's a potential performance or power and that is the VA rating. Now the actual power delivery would probably be measured in watts but that is the power being consumed, not the power being supplied. So I will refer to all of my measurements in VA, which is volt amps rather than watts. As we said, we need to figure out the cross-sectional area of the core inside the transformer. So if we measure this transformer, uh, what we need to do is to get an approximation of the length of the tongue sticking out here on the transformer. So we can see that this one is approximately 23 millimeters. Then we measure. So we measure across the stack of the laminations, and that's approximately 25 millimeters. If we come to our representation of the core area, the cross-sectional area, the two dimensions we've just measured are the Y dimension here, which we measured at 23 millimeters, and the X direction, which is the height of the stack of the laminations, we measured at 25 millimeters. We'll go through the example with this transformer to start with, and I'll show you on the calculator app the stages we need to go through to calculate VA rating of them and then at the end I'll show you the formula that I use and exactly how to use the formula. So we need to convert our dimensions in millimeters into a inch size so to do that 
uh, the, I think the easiest way to do that is to say okay one inch and then we divide that by 25.4 which is the number of millimeters in one inch and then we'll multiply that by 23 which is our first dimension and then we can do the same so one divided by 25.4 equals and then we'll multiply that by 25 which is our second dimension in millimeters so then we need to multiply that by the previous answer which is here which is 0.9055 it's close enough okay when we multiply that by the constant and square that so that gives us approximately 24 VA which is the maximum theoretical capability of this area of lamination and as we could see previously the transformer has a rating of 20 VA so in the second example we've got another transformer from RS components probably again around 20 to 30 years old um, we can see that this one has indeed been varnished and is an industrial transformer so let's measure this one and on this one we have approximately 22 millimeters by 19 millimeters so we'll go to the calculator and do the mathematics on this one. Oh, it's got a date code 2004 of interest. So once again, we'll do the one inch divided by 25.4 millimeters. And then we'll multiply that by the 22, which gives us 0.86 and we measured it as 19 millimeters which is three quarters of an inch uh, which is 0 0.75 so just save a few stages we'll multiply that by 0 0.75 which gives us 0 0.6496 we then multiply that by 5.58 and square it and that gives us a VA rating of 13.1 and I don't know if I mentioned it a moment ago, but this, according to the box, is rated at 12 VA. So we can see that the measurements do in fact work out and we can get quite an accurate gauge of the VA rating of the transformer by doing it this method. So let's go ahead and do one that has an unknown VA rating. is approximately 35 millimeters by 25 millimeters so then for this one that's our constant so we multiply that by the 35 millimeters I think just for simplicity we'll just uh, multiply that by one because it's basically a one inch stack. Then we multiply that by the factor, the constant factor, and then square that. And that gives us a VA rating of 59.1, or I believe this is a 60 VA transformer officially. So that's, uh, that works out quite well. And this transformer I have rescued from a piece of equipment. I can't remember what the equipment actually was. Uh, and it's also much more difficult to measure. I'm going to have to estimate this one a little bit. But it looks like it's approximately 27 millimeters. approximately two inches or 50 millimeters so 
So for this transformer, it's 27 millimeters multiplied by two, multiplied by the constant, So this gives a rating of around 140 VA. So it could be up to 150, I suppose, for this one. So as I said at the beginning of the video, I will show you the formulas that I'm using. And here they are. So there's one formula for metric and one formula for inch. Now, I don't know if you can see the obvious one here, but the reason I use the formula that I've been showing you, which is the square root of VA divided by 5.58, is because it is by far the easiest one to remember. All you have to do is to convert a metric measurement into a inch measurement, and then use the 5.58 value to make the conversion whereas all the other formulas require a lot of decimal places to remember. So by far the easiest is to use this formula here, which is the square root of the VA divided by 5.58. Then obviously to actually calculate from the dimensions, we calculate the area of the core by multiplying the two dimensions together. We multiply that value by 5.58 and then we square that value. So that's the X squared button on the calculator. And then that will give us the overall VA value of the transformer. I hope that video was useful to somebody. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and it'll be much appreciated if you subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.